And hello, Open Formers. Welcome back. We're going to continue talking about LCHT multi region form case. So, in the last video, we are talking about thermal physical properties, and the ones we, we have uh, copied over uh, f are from the uh, thermal physical properties from water. As you can see, the coefficients there are from water. Of course, we want to change it into the oil we want. In our case, it's this uh, Dalfilm. So I'm going to change this command, of course, from water to oil. And let's uh, go through step by step what we are supposed to change. First, we want to change the molecular weight. Yeah, the molecular weight uh, from 18 to 166. So where is the 166? Okay, so... 166 is the molecular weight. Where did I find that? So now I close this. Hold on. Okay, it's from this tab, this website from Thermal Fluid Central. They say that the molecular weight is 166.0. So we're going to copy 166.0 into our case here. I put 166.0. Okay, good. Next thing we want to take a look at is this equation of state. And it says rho and it says co coefficients of 8. So where are these uh, coefficients? Okay, so like I said in the last video, uh, we have a polynomial function of the density as a function of um, temperature. So these are the polynomial function and the density okay is stated here rho l kg per meter cube and then um, you have all these coefficients note of course that this is a logarithm of the property and it's not a so you kind of have an exponential that comes out later on so open form has a model for this it's called the um, log polynomial transport model so it says this at ln of mu or ln of kappa. Or in, in our case, we can even have ln of uh, um, density. I believe in the equation of state. Okay, you have a polynomial there as well. Okay, you have a polynomial there. Okay, so this is the polynomial. However, of course, the inputs are kind of different. So here you have a logarithm of this property, but uh, OpenFOAM doesn't have, doesn't quite seem to have, at least here, doesn't seem quite, uh, doesn't uh, quite seem to have this uh, um, logarithmic equation of state kind of a thing. So they do have other models though. So we kind of have to um, do our own kind of a curve fitting to get the model that we want. So, how do we do the curve fitting? Okay, so there, there, there are some ways. One way is to do this. Uh, we've gone to a Dalton A technical data sheet. Of course, we can copy the temperatures versus the density. So this is the density profile as a function of temperature. So I'm going to copy, in fact, this whole table here. I'm going to paste it into an Excel sheet. Okay, of course it doesn't paste quite right, so we can use the text to columns under the data. So normally you'll be in home, click data and then press text to columns. Just click uh, fix with and you should finish. And there we go. Though of course the data again is not what we in a kind of a manner that we want we'll need to do some transposing so all of this is here okay you can see this um, what I'm highlighting this is the temperature because it's uh, 15 65 105 155 all the way up to 405 so of course there's a different one for Fahrenheit you can do a unit conversion but I'm not going to quite bother with that uh, yep so and it looks like Fahrenheit there's more there are more data points, but uh, I'll just make do with degree C for now, and we'll uh, just yeah do um, 
transposing of the data tables now. So I'm going to paste a transpose. Oopsie. Okay, I'm going to transpose here. Okay, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to fast forward by doing the same thing for all of these uh, data points. So after fast forwarding, uh, we get this uh, table here. So I've just done the copy and paste of all the data and rearrange it here. Okay, so you know where to get the data from is from this site. I will put it in the description, video description. So first thing we know this one is a temperature specific heat density. So temperature in degree C. It's not copyrighted. C. Okay, specific heat. Kj per kg and Kelvin is over there. Next is density. Kg per meter cube. Next is thermal conductivity, or you can just put uh, K watts per meter per Kelvin. Okay, and last one, of course, is viscosity in millipascal per a uh, millipascal second. And then, if you want, you can do a very simple conversion here. Pascal seconds and we just uh, divide by 1000 to get the correct answer okay so that's how we get our um, get our uh, data so now what is next you can just insert a chart Okay, we use, use a scatter plot. Then I'm just going to get rid of the other graph and I'll just put density versus temperature. Okay, density versus temperature. And then I will use uh, okay. I can use a you can format the chart and of course give it a the format so scatter with yeah XY scatter yep so these are the experimental data point then of course we can do we can add trend line so there's a the linear trend line kind of fits but of course we want a polynomial to fit it better okay so we can use a polynomial and then we yeah it looks like the polynomial fits this uh, data range pretty well okay so the polynomial fits the data range very well then we can just uh, see the equations format trend line hold on yeah so what uh, there's there's something i wanted to show you but this thing is kind of blocking it so let me minimize and I'll show you where. Okay, you can see display equation on chart and display R squared value. Okay. So, you can see the R squared value is very high. We can uh, sort of even use a third, the third order polynomial. Format trend line and we can increase the order. And that will give it kind of almost a perfect fit. You have, have an R square of, e of 1. Okay, so we can copy this equation over. Alright, so what is the first uh, first coefficient? 1076.5. So let's type down 1076.5 in the first one. And I write it in. Second, minus 0 0.3. Okay, let me zoom in. It's easier to see. Okay. So this is a very convenient tool by Excel, of course. So zero point minus zero point eight three five seven. Okay. Let's go to here. Minus zero point eight three five seven. 
So that's the second one. So remember, if you take a look at the open form input syntax, it's supposed to be like this. Okay, where is it? Uh, incompressible for a polynomial function equation of state. Uh, yeah. So you get a constant, then the first is with temperature, second is with t squared, blah, 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 blah. So this is with the temp um, uh, for t, 0 0.0003 for t squared. That's a positive 0 0.0003. 0 0.0003. And last one, minus 2 times 10 to the minus 6, or minus 2 e minus 6 for t cubed. Okay, so let's do minus 2 e minus 6. Okay, so at least the concept of how we put in these coefficients is over here. So the remember the first coefficient is for the constant, second is for t, this third coefficient for t squared, this is fourth coefficient for t to the fourth. Now, of course, uh, we have to be um, judiciously finishing all the, uh, what do you call it? We have to uh, finish all the coefficients as so. All right, so, um, yeah, kj per kg per Kelvin. So again, um, I'm going to put this uh, in the description. This is the H polynomial thermal equation of state. And the properties here are HF, SF, and CP co coefficient. So heat of formation, standard entropy, we kind of just ignore. CP coefficients, and we have eight coefficients. These are the polynomial coefficients. Now, um, we need to take note of the, the units here. The specific uh, heat at a constant pressure, so the CP, polynomial co uh, coefficients are to evaluate an expression in joules per kg per Kelvin. But what we are given, of course, is in kilojoules per kg per Kelvin. So what we need to do is just to multiply everything here by 1000. Okay. Specific heat joule per kg per kelvin okay so all right and i'm going to just multiply by 1000 and i'm going to repeat exactly the same process scatter plot and i'm just going to shift it here and this is the specific heat I want. I'm just going to insert a trend line again. Okay, so I want a polynomial trend line. Okay, looks like it fits well. You can increase the order to help it fit better. And then again, I can display equation, display R squared value. And that's uh, what we can do. Of course, you don't want to overcomplicate the the you don't want to overcomplicate the polynomial unnecessarily by adding so many terms. So we can just decrease until maybe order four, where r squared equals to one. That's almost a perfect fit. So if r squared is zero point nine 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 or one, I think we can stop there. So again, let's see what the terms are. 1518.9 okay so now i can instead of typing it out i'll just copy and paste copy here and right click to paste so insert first number is 1518.9 second term here second term here 2.7604 insert delete and paste 2.7604 third one 0 0.0037 third one 0, 0 okay this is the third number fourth number minus 2 times 10 to the minus 5 or 
and set minus two e minus five. Okay, minus two e minus five. Last one is three times ten to the eight. So let's do three times ten to the eight. Three e minus eight. So always make sure that there are eight coefficients there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Likewise here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So yeah. And then we're just going to continue on for the remaining two uh, that we need to do. This is in uh, kappa and mu. So where is uh, kappa? Oops, it's here. Yep. Transport mu coefficients and kappa coefficients. Do exactly the same thing, but uh, we need to uh, note the units. One is in pascal seconds, one in mods per meter per kelvin. So. Again, uh, that's why I did the conversion earlier, and we're probably gonna uh, we can continue this in the next video. Uh, I'll stop for now. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.